Chair lays out Senate Bill 530 by Chairman Huffman and recognizes Chairman Huffman to explain the measure. Is there a substitute? Uh, no, there is not. Thank you. Thank you, members. Um, this is a bill that may sound familiar because um, I had it last session as well. But in the age of social media, Texas law has failed to keep up with rapidly changing technology, and as a result, the law does not adequately address indirect harassment online. While social media websites like Facebook and YouTube have created new ways for people to connect, unfortunately, these sites have also introduced opportunities to harass or abuse others. In response, the legislature overwhelmingly passed House Bill 3490 in 2019, but Unfortunately, the bill was vetoed due to technical language concerns regarding freedom of speech. So I've, <laughs> I've worked with the governor's office to try to fix that. Uh, I think we got it fixed. Um, so we've worked with interested parties and the governor's office to address those concerns. Senate Bill 530 would close a gap in the Texas Penal Code by targeting harassment due to indirect communication, such as postings on YouTube or Facebook group pages. The bill specifies that publishing repeated communications online that cause emotional distress, abuse, or torment to another person is considered a criminal harassment offense. Additionally, to address prior concerns, a situation involving a matter of public concern is exempted as an offense, which was what the governor was concerned about. This bill is an essential step to protect all Texans from the proliferation of online indirect harassment. And that's what this bill does. And I think we have a, a witness we'd like for you to hear from. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any any questions for the author? So, Chair opens public testimony. And do we need to do need a do we have a resource or need a resource on this, or go no. ahead and go to public? Yeah, testimony? just a, yeah. I think we do public. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. The chair calls uh, Matthew Wilson. Matthew Wilson, come on down after. Matthew will be looking for Marilyn Wilson and then uh, David Wilson. Wilson. So have a seat there. Get situated and uh, introduce yourself and give us your testimony. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, morning, Madam Chair Huffman and members of the committee. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for your tireless support of uh, making the statutes and, and uh, laws better for the state of Texas and all Texans. Really appreciate you guys being here. Um, with awareness of the time limit here, I'm going to summarize our years-long effort to find justice for our daughter who was a victim of uh, such uh, harassment in uh, middle school. She was 13 at the time, and the perpetrator of uh, the so-called crime um, posted YouTube video made of photographs, innocent photographs of our daughter, no nudities, but subtitled with horrible, obscene, profane smut about what he wanted to do to her. He did this to five other girls in middle school, all of them 12 to 13 years old. When we attempted to pursue this situation through uh, AISD police and Austin Police Department, we learned that um, there was a lot of sentiment. He may not have actually committed a crime because publicly posting harassment like this, unlike sending messages directly to a recipient, is not covered by the current statute. So this, uh, this kid moved out of the jurisdiction, went to a different school district, uh, avoided any sort of investigation or prosecution, and then later moved back into the area, different school district, and um, since then has reached out to my daughter. Uh, my daughter has been in therapy ever since for three years. Um, it's her, her, the, uh, her experience of the harassment that occurred both from this individual and afterwards because of the 75 views and unknown numbers of sharings of this video that occurred in the, the moments after it was posted uh, have impacted her forever. And as well as the other five girls who were also similarly attacked by this person, one of them attempted to commit suicide a few weeks later. My daughter had a cutting incident and is still in therapy today from these occurrences. So I just, uh, I can't emphasize enough that we need to do something to protect our children from this sort of thing. And um, I just really appreciate y'all's consideration of this bill and, uh, and moving forward with it. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Wilson. Uh, any, any questions? No. Thank you for thank you very much for thank being you. here. My pleasure. Thank you for being here. The chair calls uh, Marilyn Wilson. Ms. Wilson, take your time. Have a seat there. When you get situated, uh, 
introduce yourself to us and give us your testimony. And, and if you don't mind, we'll be able to understand you better if you'll remove your mask while Thank you testify. You. Thank you. Welcome. Um, I'm Marilyn Wilson, um, Madam Chair Huffman, members of the committee. It's an honor to be here today. And I'm obviously very much in support of Senate Bill 530. Um, I'm here speaking as the mother of the young woman who illustrates the need for this bill, which would make an offense to publish it on social media or repeated communications that are designed to harass, abuse, or torment another person with emotional distress. Um, needless to say, my husband did a great job of ex explaining what had happened, but the hard part is that when it's on social media, there's just no safe place. There wasn't a safe place. We looked at moving her, but the screenshots and when it's online, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. It was at church. It was at other schools. Um, it was really very much targeted. The YouTube mm -hmm. channel was named for the school and it was named for her. Mm -hmm. There was no safe place. The trauma of these events continued to haunt them, haunt her, and it is there. One of the things is that the current law, the harasser is treated as if nothing has ever happened and he will face no repercussions or impact of the law, which is currently written to say that this sort of behavior is condoned. It is not to be condoned under the law and we need your help to change this so that people like my daughter and her friends and the young women, like at the schools or throughout our state, know that we stand behind them. And the question that we have now is how can we protect her the committee substitute in the file of SB 530 and the filed version of HB 818 is an updated, ver updated version of 86R HB 3490 that overwhelmingly did pass the legislature and it was vetoed by the governor in the previous legislative session because of the worries of free speech. And thank goodness you all have worked tirelessly to help resolve that. And with the following language which was added, unless the communications are made in connection with matters of public concern. Along with that accompanying definition, it would make sure that there is no, there would be no chilling effect on political speech. All stakeholders agreed to the new language and with this new language, the amended statute should be approved for the governor's signature. We really appreciate Governor Abnett, Representative Cole and Senator Huffman, you and your office have worked so hard because without you all, we wouldn't have this interim measure to ensure this crucial bill would pass for the governor ready to sign. We really need this. Our, everyone needs it. And to think that we've been online this, during this pandemic, and it's everyone is even more so. I really appreciate you all. I hope this passes this time. Thank you very much for your time. Ms. If you Wilson. have any questions, I'm available, of course. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, I just Mr. want to Johnson. say, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, thank you for sharing this with us. This is extremely important, and I hope that your daughter finds the peace that she deserves, that no online publication can take away from her the good person she is. So we'll be supporting this. Oh, thank you very much. I'm a parent, too. That's right. Well, thank you. Right. Appreciate that. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Oh, wait. i got to get my mask on. <laughs> That's all right. Thank you for thank you. thank you for being here. Uh, the chair calls uh, David Wilson. David Wilson. Okay. Mr. Wilson, have a seat. Get situated there and uh, introduce yourself to us. Give us your testimony. Welcome. Hello, um, I'm David Wilson, uh, and an acknowledgement of time limits. I'm going to have to go pretty fast, so I'll just go ahead and, and uh, get this going. Um, I stand here in support of House or Senate Bill 530. Um, Madam Chair Huffman and members of the committee, I sit before you today as a witness of the nearly insurmountable maleffects suffered by victims of virtual publicly posted online harassment. As much as it pains me to say, as you already know, my sister and several of her friends uh, were a victim of this sort of this sort of harassment. Um, a little over like three years ago, a boy created some of the most gruesomely descriptive and explicit video series videos I've ever seen. Um, he obscenely captioned and cropped several different photos from the Instagrams of several different uh, young women's profiles, and created videos explaining basically what he wanted to do to each woman, and there were. It was awful. It was, it was terrible for me as a brother to look at. It was terrible for my sister 
to see, and it was terrible for the treatment and the, the public humiliation and the ridicule that my sister and her peers, or her friends experienced from her peers after these videos. Um, as you can imagine, these, these videos basically led my sister into a, a series of, of traumatic experiences and, and some, some depression. And uh, going to church one Sunday morning, I noticed marks of, of self-harm on her wrists, which she later told me were a direct result of the videos. And then last March, uh, I happened to discover my sister's comatose body in her bed after a, a purposeful drug overdose, mm -hmm. which she had accredited also toward the ramifications of these videos. And, you know, I, I mean, as a brother, I'm sure you can understand this very hard uh, to go through. We, we rushed her to the hospital, where she ended up thankfully making a full physical recovery, but her emotional scars were deeper than ever. Um, and it seems to me, after talking with her friends and speaking with her, everyone who went through the same thing uh, is still deeply shaken from these events, and, and many of them ended up turning to self-harm and, and drugs even, in an attempt to cope with, with what they went through over the course of two to three years without their perpetrator experiencing any sort of um, um, ramifications to his actions. And it's just it's sad to see such little uh, uh, enforcement and such, such little, like, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it just doesn't make sense why we have no laws behind this, you know? And so, um, the, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I got a little bit, a little bit lost. Um, what's interesting about this online sexual harassment is that unlike just in one scenario and just in one event, it can happen forever. It can go on and on. The, there can be screen recordings and, and screenshots and videos posted, um, and they never go away. And no one ever puts their phone down, meaning that sexual harassment for someone who was a victim of it online never ends. It's, it's unending and, and is, is just a terrible, terrible perpetual cycle of, of destroying self-esteem and self-image. And this is detrimental to, avail, uh, to a developing human being. And it's gone completely unseen by any form of law. By ignoring these issues and remaining complacent, I believe that we are essentially condoning these immoral actions. And I don't think we can stand for this. So I, I thank you, uh, Senator and, and, and committee. And um, yeah, thank you for your time. This was an excellent testimony. Thank you. Senator, is there any questions for Mr. Wilson? Thank you for being here. Thank you. Does anyone else uh, present wish to testify on for or against Senate Bill 530? A number of individuals and groups have expressed their position, uh, support for the bill, and, and without objection, this will all be shown in the record. Uh, anyone else wish to testify on for or against Senate Bill 530? Seeing none, public testimony is closed.